You know where you are. That was the magnificent, legendary Mr. C. Yes. Wow. Yes, sir. That was Mr. C introducing and breaking yes, down sir. that history and that knowledge. Yes, sir. Salute to my nephew Kalani for finding that clip. Yeah, Salute to you, family. Salute, right, right, right. Salute to him. All right. 1986. Damn. Wow. We still wow. young. Wow. Yes, we yes. still young. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now I was I was thinking about it because first of all, I want to say um it's amazing. This is this is coming from the the hip hop fan, not the Whatever I'm known as. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they, you know, they say Our all family. That. Our family. Yeah. You guys were so instrumental in my development as a hip-hop fan. Peace. I wow. grew up playing instruments. Peace. I mm. talk about it all the time. Heather them tease me, but it's the truth. I grew up in band, right? And I thought it was so interesting um, that you guys were a hip-hop band. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Not to be confused with Sugar Hill Gang. Yeah, man. They were not a hip hop band. No. Right? Who are the other folks they say were hip hop bands? Well, well I, I just want to clear the air real quick, man. I swear, you are family, and we're not taken away from those bands. We actually were inspired by the Fatback Band, but just because the Fatback Band had a rapper on their record yeah. didn't make them a hip hop band. Mm -hmm. A uh, Fatback Band is a funk fusion jazz band they always have been that uh -huh. just that when uh the, the djs were spinning the, spinning records like good times and you had the rappers rapping they thought it was cool to have somebody rap over the record and that's how we got king tim the uh third -huh. king tim the third didn't make the fat back band a hip-hop band and let me make this one clear okay since we you know stethosonic originally first deal was with sugar hill records a hundred dollars then how much did they give you a hundred dollars or something like that. Y'all signed a deal for a hundred dollars? No, 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 band was musicians that Sylvia and Bobby hired to play on the record. So session musicians. Session musicians right. okay. that played with Ashford and Simpson. Uh -huh. And so, so there, there was no hip hop band. And one more thing to clear up. Nobody pinned the name hip hop band in 83, 84, but it was pinned by Delight in 85. When you said what? Straight from the letter. We're the hip hop band. There you go. There you of go. America, <laughs> London, and even Japan. There you go. <laughs> Delight is in the building. Bobby is in the building. <laughs> Steps of Sonic is in the and, building. And, and the point is, when it when it comes down to our culture, uh -huh. because our past, you you don't you are you are not a now, and that's for any young kid. Mm. You do not be a now unless you have a past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're going to forget your past, then get rid of your language. Mm. Get rid of how you walk. Yes. Get rid of how you read and so forth and so on because all that is what makes you now. Your past mm. is what makes you here right now. So the past, our past, as a people, as a culture, is always going to be important. And without that, you become nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And we thank you. And we thank everybody wow. for pulling us back in, man. We appreciate it. We really, a lot of our peers, man, some didn't come through, but a lot did come through, man. And we appreciate it. We really, like, you really don't know. I mean, I know you, I, I remember a while back, me and you talked, and you was like, yo, man, when we came to New York and we heard Sally. Oh, like, my God. Oh, man. You remember that story? <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, my God. Yo, can I tell my story? Go ahead, baby. Go I want to know the story. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to know the story. <laughs> what year did Sally come out? That was 88. 88. It was, hold on, real quick, it was originally for the On Fire album. Okay. The first album. The first album, right. album but it came on the second. Right. right. King Tech and I were in New York. Mm -hmm. It was 1989. Mm -hmm. This is my first time coming to New York. You know, we're, we're coming out of high school, and we want to take this trip. Right. And we want to go to the Mecca. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> we believed everything we saw in Word Up magazine. To like <laughs> <laughs> everything we read and everything we saw, we believed it, mm-hmm. and we wanted to go to the tunnel. Oh, and we didn't know we looked like West Coast dudes. Mm-hmm. Like we mm-hmm. thought we were dressed up hip hop like the videos. Mm-hmm. And the tunnel used to make you stand outside. Yes, and yep. some dude would point at you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm looking at me and Tech like, man, it is no way we gonna get in this club. Mm-hmm. We, we look like babies <laughs> from the West Coast, and we had a a beat maker and DJ, the Duke of Denmark. Mm. Yes, mm-hmm. I remember the Duke of yeah. Denmark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Duke of yep. Denmark, bro. That's we're, crazy. We're hanging with the Duke of Denmark, <laughs> and he knew somebody in the club, and he we were able to get in. So the tunnel had upstairs, downstairs. Yeah. So mm. we're upstairs, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is it, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we seeing dudes like just some ruffians walking around. Like, <laughs> oh, he's scary. Oh, he's scary. Mm. He's scary. <laughs> and I'm just really absorbing this. This is my mecca. This is my pilgrimage, mm-hmm. right? First time. And I went downstairs, and I hit that, play, 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 and I'm hearing this. This beat was going on, right? And me and Tech walked in and you know, we used to break back then. So, we, you know, we start, you know, popping. And I start looking around in the whole club. There wasn't one person who was not dancing, mm. right? And I had never heard it in a club like this. And Sally, that beat, that music had became the soundtrack in my head wow. of New York, what it's like, to, it's the vibe. Yeah. Right. And so every time I came to New York, past that I was looking for this vibe mm. right <laughs> that same trip when you were in lower Manhattan I can't think of what De La Soul song it was uh, and they were playing De La Soul and Stessa Sonic and De La Soul curated my wow. first that's ever a, New York trip wow now I think you've seen the Prince that's Paul a, right that's, here. A poor, that's a poor beat right. I know. that's Sally that's a poor beat that's your beat <laughs> yeah. that's uh, just me and Fruquan that's him and Fruquan, Fruquan? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a remix for Jesse Stett mm-hmm. that didn't make it, and then we just that we just had that beat, and then the the idea for Sally came. I guess it was between Daddy O and Delight that mm-hmm. put it together. Yep. Oh wow! So y'all got on the new album. Here we go again. You got a song called Lolita. I think it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Lolita. Yeah, is that yeah, yeah. is that like the uh, sequel to the 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 pre the sequel that, to Sally? Or? That is the uh, now time advancement of Sally. Okay. Because of how <laughs> Talking talk that mic about, for me, Delight. Because we talk about uh, Lolita, how we met her, you know what I'm saying, and how we finally got together, mm-hmm. how we had to, you know, make sure that her mind was straight and so forth and so on, and then, you know, it happened. You, you got to listen to the record. It's, it's a story that's uh, kind of unique because what we do is that Daddy-O starts it off, and then... Wise, almost like continues the story, so it's it's like one story, but mm. and the same story, but it's three individuals that meet the this same girl, girl named Lolita. Yeah, wow, and she, she's a queen, but no disrespect, because I, I I love everything we do on this now, but nobody beats Sally, man. Well, nobody nobody beats Sally, Sally. Sally. Yo, yo, Sally. Yo, yo, can I ask the light a question? Oh, yeah. yeah. How, how old is she? It's, she's 32. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, been a minute. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. But you, we talk yeah. about... You got to talk about your past. We, <laughs> yo, yo, yo. But we talk about relationships, right, in, in, the, in Lolita in regards to a older man mm-hmm. meeting... A younger woman. Yeah, but how old because is that younger woman? They're she's like thirty-two. Oh, she's right, right. Daddy okay. O says it in his oh, that's verse. Right. That's, yeah. right. that's right. That's right. You're right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You know? <laughs> there you go, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know she ain't a she ain't a baby. All right, she's all right. a grown woman. All right, all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, and this is a juicy topic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yo, this getting the room getting more quiet. The <laughs> light gets louder. It's like what? You like it's like a long hallway getting oh, longer. Right. Right. You can quit now, D. Okay. Right. You can tap out, D. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which yeah, means you when you were 32, how old was she? <laughs> oh, she wasn't that's born. <laughs> I'm just that saying. Right. I'm just saying. Yeah. We sorry. We, we sorry. Not, I'm only teasing. Hey, 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 so let me ask you this: All that jazz came out on the. 
In Full Gear album? Was yeah. It? In Full Gear, right? Now, I recollect, if I'm not mistaken, when that came out, because it was the conversation back then was about sampling. Right. Right, right. and a lot of the older artists uh, were upset that they were being sampled. Right. Um, and, it, and it was relatively new, you know, to the game on how sampling rights were going to work. And I remember Ntume and others spoke out mm-hmm. about Stetsasonic sampling music, and it was this big debate and discourse and conversation about sampling music. Right. Um, what was that time period like for y'all? And especially you, did you do all that jazz? Uh, me and, and Don Newkirk, rest Don, in peace. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don Newkirk, man. Yeah, that's, right. that's Don on a baby. Did, did, did you? F- that's that Newkirk. Yeah, yeah. Did y'all feel betrayed by the older artists? No, 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 no. no, well, no hold no. on. Well, here's what happened. Okay. I actually called Daddy Yo because I heard an interview. It was Gladys Knight, uh-huh. James M. Toomey. Uh, it was another uh, record producer. I can't get his name. They were on uh, a talk show talking about how um, uh, rap artists are stealing from them. And we understood it because some people were using samplers and not paying them. We were paying people. Oh. We we had no problems paying people. Even when we did talk about that jazz, um Lonnie gave it to us. Right. Like, yo, you, I, you, I, yo, I, you. matter of fact, I went to Lonnie. Yes. Yeah, like, know yo. what I'm saying? He said, hey, you know, I, I like to use this this record. But it wasn't at that time about sampling. Uh-huh. Right. It was about um a new way in which rap is going to express itself. Because that is the first hip hop, jazz single. Yes. That that will all that jazz. Right. That will lead to the growing and expansion of our presentation as artists. Yeah, because Gangstar came right, right behind us. And then you yes. had Gangstar, mm-hmm. Q Tip, and so forth, and so on, uh-huh. and so on. That was just a vision that I had of how I could see our music gender growing. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop growing and expanding, you know what I'm saying, and incorporating the history from my past. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you as is right there. Yeah. So you know, Lonnie Liston Smith said, "Hey, you know, go for it." He said, and "You then, guys got yeah, this is the young blood now." Yeah, you're, right. I mean, now, we, now he got it for a price, the, though. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> now go. Now go into the story, Bobby. Of no, how, no, of but a, and 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 that was it. And then and then I told Daddy about it, and actually y'all was in the studio. Um, and that night, Daddy O and Delight and them, they all sat down and Dean and them, they was writing. And y'all know how the song starts. Yeah. It goes, Well, here's how it started. started. Heard you on the radio. radio. Talking about rap, saying all that crap about how we sample. Oh, Give an example. example. Think we, you know, that's, it was. Well, she, do you want to do the lyrics? She, <laughs> yeah. she, can you do I, I the... had good ad libs. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but, but it, was, it was that. And I felt kind of betrayed because. I, I was in love with Gladys Knight. I'm like, Gladys Knight is spazzing on us. It was like they were saying we weren't creative and we weren't talented. Mm-hmm. They were saying, you know, we we, we kind of understood it, but we wanted the, them to understand that we're not those kind of acts. We we understand it. We come from a musical background. I come from a background touring with Lilo Thomas and Kashif. Oh. And uh, I, I play drums with those guys. I'm on their records. Uh-huh. So the drums you hear, like, even on Lilo's or Evelyn King records, that's me playing drums on it. So we come from that background, so we kind of know... How that is? You playing on Evelyn King? Yeah. What yeah. songs? I did. Um, <laughs> you still uh, That wasn't me. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I know Paul be doing no, this. No, that's just the universe. <laughs> the universe. Know, right? <laughs> um, 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 uh, is it bet you should, bet you, should, bet you shouldn't I love you? One of them songs. Bet you shouldn't I love you? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. And I learned from guys like Leslie Ming. So we, 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 we have that background, that musical background. Um, um, in music, I played on Lilo's records. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in love, sexy girl, and you know, you're a good girl. I played on those songs, wow. so we we come from that kind of background. So we we knew that we was gonna create and do this. We had to find our own space, but take a little bit from the past. Yeah. That was at a time where everybody was raping James Brown, and James Brown wasn't getting nothing. Uh huh. We didn't want to be the we didn't want to be that group. Mm-hmm. We wanted to be the group that we can take a piece and enhance from it. But when Gladys Knight started spazzing, I was like. My wet dreams was over. Oh, <laughs> come on, Bobby. That is good in there, man. It was a good story up until that. All right. Uh, <laughs> but we cool now. Y'all we, good uh, now? Yeah, yeah. And Gladys is amazing, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, she is. Oh, my yeah, gosh. She is. Her no beautiful doubt. self no and doubt. voice. That voice, we yes. talk about it all the time. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so before there was Native Tongue, you know, before there was Tribe Called Quest, before there was Gangstar, there was Stetsasonic right. that released the first 
jazz hip hop song with all that jazz. Yes. Uh, check the catalogs. Okay. Now we're just <laughs> doing some history, Tyler. It's just a little bit of history <laughs> right there. People Google anyway. They be like, well, let me let me Google okay. it. Okay. Find it. All right. You so know? when you hear jazz influence in any hip hop music, know that Stessa Sonic was the first, right? Did you make peace with Gladys Knight and those oh, other yeah, people? Oh, yeah, no, no, no. M2, uh, actually, M2, me, okay. we, me and Daddy, we were friends with M2, me up to the day he died. Okay. So we we, we definitely made amends. We made amends with them, like, in the before uh, the 90s entered, you okay. know. So they, they because we sat down and we talked to them and we explained to them what, you know, what we were doing. And, and we were paying people. And that's what M2, me said. You know, he was he said, all I'm saying is pay me. And we like, well, we we, we paying people. Well, we didn't sample James M. Toomey, but we were just letting them know that most artists weren't paying. And James Brown was getting hit hard. James without, Brown. Without getting paid. Oh, the facts. And you know did, what I'm and, and we don't even, did he own his publishing at that time? Yeah, he did. Yeah. He did? Yeah, okay. he did. Wow. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn, he was getting hard. Yeah, so, so we made peace. Who okay. did the drums for Ghost Stetsa? That was, um. um that, that particular cut. Um, Ghost Stetzer he was passed. done by an individual who has passed. His name is Nathar. Nathar. He used, he used to live right across the street from me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, at that time I wasn't living in Brooklyn. I'm originally Queens cat. Oh wow! From oh. South Jamaica. I grew South up side. in the Forty Project. So you mean you ain't Brooklyn? Get out of here, man! Time, man. Well, you ain't Brooklyn? You know. <laughs> I, no, no, no. I, I refer to myself as a QB baby. Okay. That's Queens, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Just like you have. You know, the expressway. Nah, man, it's Brooklyn straight. You ain't get out of here. <laughs> Damn, Bobby, stop saying tripping. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, hey, but bottom line, you know what I'm saying? Because I used to play ball, so uh -huh. I used to always play ball in Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? And But but bottom line is that uh, I was raised up in Queens during my younger years. And during that you know, that time in Queens, that's how Wichicombe live used to live right around a corner from me. Running the Infinity them? Machine. Oh, the Infinity Machine. Right. Wow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Dude, what is that? You know, <laughs> DJ Divine and yeah. so forth the so on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a long well, time ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, okay. and, you know, I grew up with them cats. Uh -huh. I went to school with them cats. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So, when you're talking about... Um, um, what was you talking about? The drums. Uh, the the drums. About the drums. So, and they so, so Nadar, who used to live across the street with me, both of us were um, part of the 5% nation. You know what I'm saying? So yes. we were, you know, gods and herbs at that particular time. And so I asked him to come in because, you know, I had created it in the uh, apartment of Daddy O in, uh, in uh, Noble Drew on New Lots Avenue, right? And... Um, Upon it, you know, going on the drum machine and hitting out the drums and so forth and so on, I said, hey, you know, I don't want to use the drum machine. I want us to have live drums. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this whole thing. You got that? You got that? Right. Yeah, this, yeah, this. Yeah, I got to credit the DBC, though. Cause yeah, he, yeah, true, too. Yeah, yeah, and the DBC. Yeah, yeah. well, he, he contributed after I had did the drum, the actual drum track and told everybody how the rhyme is going to really take place and stuff wow. and so on. And so whatever he added, he added, you know, but originally I had did the drums and I already had told Daddy-O and the rest of the group, for those that know, that hey, I want live drums. And so I went- Oh no, I remember man. that. Yeah, yeah. That, that, but that was, that was I, always the plan. The plan right. was to prove, the, to, to show people that we are going, cause you gotta remember too, Sway, man, at the very beginning of the time, everybody mm -hmm. in hip hop just had a DJ. But right. was the song originally titled Go Brooklyn or Go Stetsa? What was the original title of that song? No, it was, it was Go Stetsa. It was Go Stetsa. It was Go Stetsa. It was Go Stetsa. Oh, okay. it was Go Stetsa. Mm -hmm. Those you know drums were crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, um, uh, I ain't gonna tell you how we did the drums. But why no, not? I think well, I, well, I guess I could tell you. I can tell you the how. The reason why I asked about that particular song because it was something about the drums, and I think everybody would agree. But, it cut through yeah. every right. single and, song and you, that was out at that time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know what was cutting through, or why it cut through? I'll let you know. Because we had Mike the drums from the bathroom. Yeah, from the bathroom of Calliope mm -hmm. Studios. We'll leave what the bathroom door open. Oh, you left the door <laughs> open. The bathroom door open. Put the, the mic. 
Yeah, so you get the rest. <laughs> we shouldn't be telling people this, man. Now they go ask me. No, but bro, you, the technology is advanced. That's why I said I wasn't going to tell. It's funny because it's true. They, they can, they, they can <laughs> literally just just, yeah. just, just, just reverb it yeah, and they, just make it sound like it's the right. you know, ambience right. of the room. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's do it. We got Steph Sasonic here. The new album is Here We Go Again. It's out now on all platforms. Let's take them back. Say four five eight 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 seven four two three three four five. I need the true hip hop heads to call up. We got Tyler and Rashid Wallace up here as well. Yes, allowed. Yes, sir. That up. Clap that up. Hey, Ghost that uh, yeah. Ghost that. Uh, yo, Stessa Sonic is here. Clap <laughs> that up. New <laughs> album. Here we go again. And, and you know one thing, Sway. That that was another point moment in history, whereas. You know, as far as I'm, I was seeing it then that we can expand our culture musically. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Bringing new sounds in there. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? That's That was my whole idea, you know, behind the live drums and so forth and so on. You know, putting it, putting our game on the next level where they can see the growing creativeness mm -hmm. that is now today. So you, you knew know you wanted to do that from the jump. Yes. No doubt. And we shout out the other cats, man, that that are cool with us, that follow behind it. Like uh, the Fugees did it. The Fugees did, did it early. And the Roots did it early. Latifah mm -hmm. did it. Yeah. Everybody, and not right, even right now, Light is doing it. We just did a concert with Light. With MC Light. Yeah, same let me, let, let me go back to that song. Mm -hmm. That song was like a battle cry for a lot of folks. <laughs> <laughs> all I want to talk about that. Go Yo, tell them about Latin Quarters, man. All, all I wanted, cause I, I, I Starts used to- Starts with Latin Quarters. It, it did. Went to, went to the I, famous club in I, New York, I, right? I, I used to be the DJ at the Latin Quarters Club. Okay. And when Gostetsa came on, everybody tuck your chain in. If you had on a nice pair of sneakers, either take it off and use your socks to do the Roger Rabbit. What? Because you getting robbed. What? <laughs> I swear to God. Am I lying? Hey. Wait, Am I lying? lying? What? No it lying. was insane. It was insane. It was insane. When you you witnessed this? Y'all seen this? Oh, uh, without, you kidding without me? a doubt. It was that and um, what was it? Uh, Ultra Magnetic. Ultra Magnetic. Ego Tripping. No, Get Funky. Oh, Get Funky. Get Funky. Get funky. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because think about it. Think about it. Those two like, songs. Like, you, you got your chain on, right? Mm. And let's say every, everybody in this room went in the frenzy when that record came on. You ain't paying attention because you just like, yo, yo. And somebody just run right across you while you dancing. Go, bro, clear, rah. The chain is coming on. You see that happen. Sneakers off, too. Sneakers off, too. But no, they used to go behind you. Uh huh. Let's jump and take the sneakers. They what? Yeah. yeah. No, Heim I'm Heimrich. Yeah. This team take the sneakers off. Yo, he, he like Paul said, uh, yeah, it was yeah, insane. Hey, yo, it was. Yo, one time I seen a dude in the quarters. He had a sword. Yeah. 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 I was like, yo. And that was my last time there. I was like, yo. After that, it closed down. Yo. Okay. Quarters was, I mean, you going to the tunnel was insane. Quarters yeah. was insane. Quarters was insane. Quarters was insane. Yeah. Yes. What size you wear, big man? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, you think she would have got it too? They would have got the she? I'm, I'm just saying, yo, yo, yo that, 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 the big dude uh, who was at uh, the security, he got caught too. No. Cats was, yo, hey. Cats was getting caught in the quarters. Hey, I'll say real. it again. They had a sword. So, <laughs> so, so if she wants to fight against the sword. Yep. Then... It was insane. So, it was insane. Is that why you guys uh, decided to just try to um, change the, the, the bad energy that you guys created with that song? <laughs> no, 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 and, no. And, and, and this, that, that the, wasn't the intent. That wasn't no, the intent. Because no, 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 really Stessa Sonic was the reason for a lot of people getting <laughs> amputated. And, um, but, <laughs> but then you turn around and do self-destruction. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Which was a huge movement at the time. It was so necessary. It's interesting we talk about the things we've seen happen in recent years in, in our communities and, and the involvement rap has had, um, either being a part of it or adjacent to it, but self destruction mm -hmm. It's like the shit is cyclical, yeah. right? Yeah. What year did self destruction come out? That was eighty nine. Eighty nine. Eighty nine. And it's the same issues we talking about today. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. But oh, but yeah. we we were that type of band. You got to remember before self destruction, uh, we did a record called Free South Africa. That's right. So we were already like, even though Ghostessa had that energy, but we knew that if we have something to say, we're going to say it. Mm-hmm. 
And those guys, they, you know, when, whenever we there was something to talk about, we, we talked about it. And I don't want nobody to get at me because I'll be seeing the typewriter secretaries on on social media. Because <laughs> oh they, they be secretary on social media. Like, uh-huh. you got to understand, I'm not saying the young artists, because there's a few young artists we like today, but but there was a moment where, where we seen something that was bad, we we talked about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and a lot of things is going on. Nobody's talking. Why are you not talking about it? Uh-huh. Because the music is what made people, you know, makes people move and pay attention to. Right. Mm-hmm. So we, we, when when Chris and and Dean Ice was putting the project together, yeah. it was a no brainer to call Sesa Sonic right. and uh-huh. Public Enemy, because uh-huh. we were pretty much the act that there was still a few, but we was pretty much the act that was speaking to our community. Uh-huh. You know, right. when, yeah. when when my man Yusuf Hawkins got hit, we were out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to um, um, send a shout out to. A young lady by the name of Dr. Shana. I don't know if you ever heard of her, but her son got attacked at college by uh, um, by individuals unnecessarily uh, hit over the head with a gun. Mm-hmm. You know that cracked his skull all the way, and um, and um, she's going after the school because they didn't have the public safety in place and, and whatever the case may be. And we have to be wary of things like that as far as changing for the better as opposed to changing for the worse. Because mm-hmm. change is constant in the universe, but it's whether it's for the better or for the worse. And we uh, have to. Yeah, because we're looking at the worst right now. Yeah, we, we're looking we're, at the worst. We're looking mm-hmm. at the worst right now. Mm-hmm. You know okay. what I'm saying? I want to so. talk about change, and, and thank you for that delight um, with Stessa Sonic. I'm coming back. You see what I'm doing here? Because <laughs> <laughs> I want to think it was after the Blood, Sweat, and Tears album um, is when Stessa Sonic broke up. Is that true? Uh, well, actually, we, we didn't break up. Um, Y'all didn't break up. No, no I'm, I'm. Oh, I got the smirk on his face. Like, really? yeah, I know, right? <laughs> really? Hey, I can <laughs> read you too. <laughs> 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 like this. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, we like me and Paul connected now. We just had a moment. And, and, Y'all didn't here's break the deal up, with that. And, and 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 I know. Here's the deal with that. Okay. The deal with the Blood, Sweat, No Tears album. At this particular time, everybody was on fire. Mm-hmm. Everyone. Paul was on fire. Daddyo was on fire. We was all on fire producing records. And everybody was going in a lot of different directions. It was actually hard to put everybody together to do the Blood, Sweat, and No Tears album. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody was on the run, you know, and which which fairly, because everybody had their moment where it's like, yo, I just got a call to do this. I got a call to do this. I got a call to do Shabarangs. I got, you know, Tony Terry. So we was all working. Um, what happened is, is that we put that Blood, Sweat, and the Tears uh, album together, but Tommy Boy wanted a fourth album, which we were contracted for. Okay. And we wasn't planning to give them a fourth album because we wasn't seeing things going right uh, with the band uh-huh. or even with them. And then some issues happened with Daddy O too because you gonna y'all gonna see this story. How some wait, wait, y'all got an unsung yeah, coming yeah, out. Yeah, they got an yeah, unsung yeah. coming unsung, out. Yeah, yeah, April fourteenth. I don't, don't want to tell you any of that. You okay. gotta watch the unsung. Watch the unsung. So you saying Daddy Daddy O was the problem? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he just said? That's not what he said. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna mess up Bobby's political career. Okay. By answering that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. that wasn't it. You got, <laughs> that you is gotta, my guy. You got yeah. You got you, no no no. You gotta watch the story. A lot a lot just went down. Um, it was really hard keeping everybody together for that album. So when Tommy Boy was trying to squeeze us to do a fourth album, everybody just said, "Yo, we just gonna take a break." We never said to each other, "Yo, I quit." We never quit. We just said we just not gonna. Do a Stetsasonic album, period. Nobody was doing that. Paul wasn't submitting nothing. I wasn't submitting nothing. Daddy on wasn't writing nothing. At the time, Daddy was working on a solo album, too. Mm-hmm. And it was supposed to be with Tommy Boy, but it didn't go with Tommy Boy. It went with Island Records. That's when Kedar mm-hmm. came into the picture to begin managing. And Kedar okay. helped push the Neo Soul movement. Right, exactly. created the Neo Soul movement. So, and yeah. Chico so, DeBarge and D'Angelo exactly. and everybody. Okay. Right. So, I mean, the, 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 to give you a real serious answer, we didn't really break up. We just all just said, you know what? We out of here. We we got other things going on anyway. But it was well, change. I, 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 right. was, yeah. I wasn't in um, recording, I'm going to tell you, we, uh, with Tommy Boy, and you'll, you'll see that on the unsung, uh, because I think that um, as far as really understanding you know, because I consider myself a visionary. Mm-hmm. And far as did they get the, the clear picture 
of what we were trying to do as a hip hop band. I didn't think so. You know what I'm saying? I'm I ain't scared to let y'all know. Mm. I I didn't I didn't think so. I didn't see it. You know what I'm saying? Certain things that was not done that I wanted done. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I needed it done. You know th- that would be the signs. Let me know that hey, as a label, you are you're seeing our vision. But you have to understand the place that hip hop was in at that time. A lot of people is looking at lab- labels, just looking at it, just making the money. Yeah. Of, and of course, you that's know what fine. You, you know what but, Tom Silverman told us. What Tom Silverman told us. I'm sorry. What to like, Tom Silverman, a founder of Tommy of Tom Boy Records, De La Soul came up here and yeah. told their story. Yeah. You, you know yeah. what? Tom, I, I swear to God, this is what Tom to, told us. He to, Tom said that it was. And, and Monica, but Monica's cool with us. They, we, Monica we're Lynch. Cool, we, we're all yeah. cool with them. But but Monica, they had no idea what to do with this vision. We were a hip-hop band. What do we do? I don't think this is, no one's going to get it. Because at the time, Hammer was uh-huh. out. Everybody was coming out. So I was like, what is this y'all trying to do? Just make the records. But long behold, you now, you saw the Black Eyed Peas. You yep. saw the Fugees. Yep. And you see the Roots. And now they get it. Uh-huh. But we needed someone to get it. When we was trying to sell it to you, right? <laughs> yeah, mark that tie. <laughs> <laughs> mark that. You know, yeah. yeah. So we, we, you were ahead of your time. Well, no, and the wrong people were making the decisions. I, there, there's, there's your answer. That's there the answer. Like, there's your answer. Otherwise, I I guarantee you, we would be up to our twentieth album by now or more. Had they saw the vision, so yes. you get these executives in place, and because they've had success off of. Um, a low investment, mm-hmm. uh, high mm-hmm. ROI, mm-hmm. you know, then they think they know culture. Hey, right. now, now now, Tom think he could be in the studio making Stetson Sonic yeah, exactly. records, right? right. I'm That's just right. using him as an example. Right. but we That's a good example. Yeah, we see that in radio, too. <laughs> yeah. We see that in radio. Mm-hmm. You got top executives that think they can make decisions on culture. culture right, right, exactly. That's exactly. The, you're absolutely right. You're 100% right, man. Both <laughs> Yep, yep. <laughs> Bam! All clocks down. In general, in general. I don't shot. Bow. All clocks down. <laughs> All right, man. That's the Sonic. Tracy G. I'm glad that you guys are here and are so transparent. Um, what you both were sharing right now, it made me think, Paul. I believe for the psychoanalysis project, going mm. back to '96. And correct me if I'm wrong, because when I was doing research, I had read that during that time, you felt like your career was shaky. Oh, yeah. And that folks were not supporting you and that it was a challenge getting key figures that you once had easy collaborative time with being on the album. Can you speak, if that's true, can you speak more about what was going on and how you got over that hump? Yeah, I think it's like... And the way society is, right? Fair weather friends, when you're doing good, I could tell when I have a new record out and it's doing well, because mm-hmm. I get a lot of calls and, hey man, what you doing? Let's hang it out, you know, we're going. <laughs> but, you know, it was at a time where I stopped working with Dayla, you know, um, Stet didn't have a record out, Grave Diggers didn't do well, and it was crickets. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was going through a custody situation, getting custody of my son at the time. It was, it was hard, it was the worst time I could ever have. And so, you know, you reach out, Oh man, me and such such is cool. You know, I helped him build a shed in his house and that mm. crickets. You mm. know what I'm saying? And it just happened like that. So for me, it was just self sufficient. Let me just get friends I worked, you know, went to uh, school with, you know, just people who are close who were down with me who were there from the beginning. And I don't know how it happened. I don't know what in the universe shook, but my career resurrected itself and that led to Handsome Boy Model School, which you know, Dan, the automator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chris Rock album, which won, you know, a few of them, which. A few Grammys, and then, <laughs> and then Prince Among Thieves. You know, mm-hmm. so it, it's it just it, it's how do you say you just don't give up? You know what I'm saying? There and, you and, go. And you don't give up on yourself. If if anybody's gonna believe in you, if you don't believe in yourself, then I expect other people to believe in you. And it was mm-hmm. very. Right. It sounds simple, but it it wasn't that at simple that time, right? when you go through it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. we, we all been through it. You but, know what I'm but, at but, some point. But you understand that? Well, it's, it's like we 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 all have that kind of energy where we create something. That that it feels good to us. Someone was telling telling us about the working on a new album. Yo, you should get such and such do a feature. They want us to do like fourteen cut album, a bunch uh, of features. Yeah. I'm like, so where's that leave room for people to 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 you know 
hear us. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, we, why would we do a bunch of features just so that we, we're not, it's, it's all about how you put a body of work. And he just answered that for you. Mm-hmm. He just answered that. He was like, yo, if it's going to stick, if not, they'll come back to it. And that's what they did. Yeah. You know, so that's why I think people, when they look at us, they go, yo, this band's, because there's some people who's looking at us like, yo, they the legends. And you got some people looking at us going, it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. you got to circle back. And uh-huh. when you circle back, You'll get it. Mm-hmm. I'm very proud of every project we all did together. That's right. Even on the Prince Among Thieves, because I'm on that album. You know? Okay. Yeah. 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 Come on, Bobby. I see you. <laughs> um. So let's let's bring it to date. Mm-hmm. You know, and I and I've I've heard Daddy O speak about this. Um, he might have even spoken on our on our show, but about why why are people stopping? You know, uh, why are you stopping? You guys, I played this song. One of my favorite songs is Now Y'all Giving Up. Thank you. Right? Um, I, for the love of hip-hop, don't understand. Maybe if you lose it, you lose it. But I enjoy watching Aerosmith, mm-hmm. um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, oh! I, huh? Sorry! You respect God, I don't mean to cut you off. Red Hot Chili Peppers, that's not Chad on the drums, that's me. I just wanted to make that clear. <laughs> Go ahead. Yo, Bobby, I'm too old for that kind of shock yeah, therapy sorry, right sorry. there. I'm sorry, Sway. Yo, yo, Tracy, hand me my heart back. It's your over here. Respect, God. You played on that? Yeah, yeah, because Daddy O did higher ground. He caught me. He said, yo, B, I need, I, that's me on the drums. That's not Chad. That's me. People, tell his yo, story, Tell your Cats, story, Bobby, get it. Chad be coming at me, yo, they'd be like, no, man, your Chad's a great drummer. And Chad wait, wait, is a great drummer. How many drummer. songs? No, I just did, I just did higher ground. Higher ground. I didn't, ground. Do, I didn't okay, do the whole okay, album. No, okay, I don't, okay, I'm okay. not going to cap that. Okay. But when Chad hit that higher ground, I go, oh, he's really funky. That's not Chad. That's me. <laughs> Daddy O did the record. It's credit on the. I'm like, y'all don't read no more the album covers? They don't. No, they don't. Of course they don't. not. No, they don't. They don't, they don't put them on. No, they yeah. do. But it's on there. But see, but that's your answer. Even DJs today, they don't read the credits. So are we entering ahead, the sorry. stage? No, no, I think that's amazing. That's <laughs> mark too. that down, Ty. Got his heart back. Yeah, I need to do that. No, 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 do that. It's cool. I need that shock therapy. <laughs> Wake <it> up. <laughs> shock therapy. <laughs> uh, so, so now, um, I'm happy you're doing this. I'm happy you're following your heart and doing what comes natural to you, right? right? I'm happy you're putting out this music because a lot of our hip hop artists who've done it for decades don't feel like they have a space to do it anymore. Right. They don't have the inspiration to do it anymore. Yet you look at these rock groups, these pop groups, these other genres and they get to they get the tour till they die, bro. Right. right. Exactly. As a matter yeah. of fact, there there's um um cuz sometimes I do Ubering. Right? Okay. And I had a couple from the New Jersey Pack Center. I don't know the name of the artist, but the New Jersey Pack Center was packed, and the artist was a Brazilian fella, and he was 81 years old. Wow. And he packed. Still packing it out. He wow. packed the plates. So it is, as elders, because if you ain't got no elders in your community, mm-hmm. your community is going to die, because who are you going to go to to get certain knowledge and information about What's what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We all are going to get old at at one time. Mm-hmm. And so the knowledge that we have of our past is should serve some, even if they don't follow it. You know what I'm saying? But they'll take notes to it. You know what I'm saying? That is an issue when it comes down to us. The main thing about is why is it important that we continue to do do music is because we are innovative and we can create the space mm-hmm. if there is no space. You know what I'm saying? We can create the, the space, space if there is no space. Wow. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because that's how hip hop got here in the first, first place. place. Uh-huh. We created space <laughs> we created. where there wasn't space. <laughs> right. They got a new show. Sheed and Tyler. <laughs> it's coming out April 16th. Right. Never before done. We created right. our space. They created their space. There you go. So yeah, an man. underdog Sheed and Tyler show. That's right. There you, you go. Right. You can watch them doing the playoffs. There <laughs> we go. Yo, I love this conversation. Um, you have a song called um, well, Cypher. Yes. Mm. On there. 
And I want to ask you about part one. This. Part one. Yes, part one. How important is the cipher Very to, to mm. development of this culture? How important is the cipher? Sit. Talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Heather, educate me. Talk to them. I talked to Sway yesterday about the cipher live on air, and I don't want to revisit that, but I, I thank you. For... Well, then can they answer it then? No, no, that's <laughs> oh, what I'm saying. I thank you okay. for deferring to me, but I would love to hear because I grew, grew up a fan of y'all. Thank like, you. Oh, okay. and, and, and just out of respect, mm. I would love to hear from, from you. Well, I mean, the cipher, it, it, the cipher will always be important to us because we look, and again, no disrespect to the new artists today because I submitted a song to a new artist to work with us on this album. And at that type of beat per minute and that groove, and he had the nerve to say to me, I can't rhyme to that. I need a slower beat. But back in the days, you put on anything, DJ put on anything, the rapper mm -hmm. was ready to go in. The real rapper. My point exactly. So Cypher is very important because it gets to show people that, yo, don't call yourself an MC if you're not going to get in this playground. Don't come in there with that num 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 nigga num 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 num. You could come with it if if we if the DJ find a a a a a pocket. Thank you, a pocket for that. But if you finish doing that, then all of a sudden he put on um zim 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 the bits the boom the boom the boom the boom. You gotta be like you gotta be ready to go. Mm -hmm. You can't have a real cipher unless you can go to every everything the DJ drops. DJ is always important. We kept keep reminding people why the cipher is important because my DJ is nice, man. Yeah, you got a nice yeah. DJ right there. <laughs> my DJ is nice. I yeah, get, I get I get checked for that one. Uh -huh. poor, poor. <laughs> I get checked for that. <laughs> the best but way not a... to incriminate yourself is not to say anything. But the cipher is important. Yes, it is very, very important. And, and it's important to the cats too to be like, just say to themselves, I, I can still get in. Mm -hmm. I can still get in. And my guys took the time to sit down and go, yo, can we get in there? And they did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the Sonic Man. Let's give these guys a big round of applause. Before we go, where's Fruquan? Fruquan is actually... I heard, he, I heard he's not a part of the group anymore. Is that true? Uh, Fruquan is still a part of the group. Fruquan right now is just an hiatus somewhere. Okay. So hopefully, eventually, things could come back. <laughs> watch, and, uh, watch the unsung. Yeah, we'll, we'll there, there you go. go. There you, you go. He, yo, it, it, Bobby, give him the time, place, space. Yeah, yeah. Check out Stessa Sonic Unsung on TV One, Sunday, April 14th at 9 p.m. It's really going to yeah. be good. We called all our peoples. And, and real quick, we also want to give um, our condolences and respect to DJ Mr. C because I Mr. called Mr. C. C. Wow. I called him to be a part of this. So he's on it. Wow. Oh. Yeah, he's on our Unsung. And wow. we, you know, we called uh, Ice T is on it. Chuck D from Public Enemies is on it. Um, uh, Paul got mace from uh, De La Soul was a part of it, oh, so man. we got we, we called in our true troopers to help us tell our story, so people won't think that we cap a lot of stuff. Okay, good. Because they was there with us. Okay, and, and you'll see Fuquan. Yeah, and you okay. see Fuquan. Fuquan, yeah. salute to Fuquan, yes. man. That guy, come mm -hmm. on, man. You got to salute, salute to all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you. Yeah. thank you for being here. Um, uh, Daddy O couldn't make it. Yeah, he couldn't make. It. He's out in uh, Massachusetts right now. Wise, but, yeah, Wise is in uh, Virginia, so we okay. want to shout them out definitely. Okay, to our family, right? The Stetson Sonic man, yeah. come on, give it up, man. Here we go again. It is out on all platforms. They got bangers on it. Prince Paul, thank you for that guest mix. Oh yes. man, thank you for inviting me. You my man. brother. Come what? on, you already know nah, it, man. Do. And <laughs> hey, man, me and Tech was riding with you when you was down and out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? You're right. Yes. You're totally right. Yes. <laughs> see, the, see the real ones, man. Come on, man. <laughs>